Welcome to the Man of Recaps. This is the complete Star Wars recap leading up to Episode 9, The Rise of Skywalker. It all started a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away with the original Star Wars, which is now called Episode 4, A New Hope. The evil galactic empire is chasing down a rebel ship. They're led by Darth Vader. You know him. He breathes real heavy and is a huge badass. He captures rebel leader Princess Leia, famous for the hair Cinnabons. He's looking for some stolen plans, but she hid them in the drawer. Yeah, there's two of them. The trash can on wheels is R2-D2. He's real cute. Beeps and boops. And his golden English butler friend is C-3PO. They escaped down to Sand Planet and, long story short, were captured by these little junk dealers, the Jawas. They're selling the droids to a dirt farmer who's got a nephew, Luke Skywalker. Luke's a good kid, but he doesn't want to be a dirt farmer. He wants to be a fighter pilot in the Resistance. But his uncle's like, Luke, I need you to help me farm the dirt. So Luke is stuck here on this dumb rock. He finds the secret message from Princess Leia, though. Help me, Obi. Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my only hope. Luke's like, dang, who's that? She's hot. R2-D2 runs away, and they're attacked by sand people, but they're scared off by the crazy hermit, Old Ben Kenobi. Old Ben Kenobi? You don't by chance know Obi-Wan, do you? Well, of course I know him. He's me. Obi-Wan used to be a Jedi Knight who could use the Force, the mysterious energy that flows through everything. Basically, they were space wizards. And they had laser swords called lightsabers. Super sweet. Luke's father was a Jedi too, but he was betrayed and murdered by Darth Vader, who went over to the dark side of the Force. He plays Princess Leia's message, but he's like, Luke, I'm too old for this. You want to come help me on an adventure? Luke's like, I'd love to, but I got to stay here and farm the dirt. But the Empire just killed his aunt and uncle, so he's like, yeah, I guess I'm coming. Let's do it. Stormtroopers are looking for the droids, but Obi-Wan can Jedi mind trick them. These aren't the droids you're looking for. They hire Han Solo, the coolest pilot in the galaxy, along with his best friend and first mate, the Wookiee Chewbacca. <laughs> But Han's got a bounty on his head, so he shoots first and goes to see Jabba the Hutt, who he owes money to. He's like, hey, I'll do this one last job and then pay you back, I promise. So they fly off on Han's ship, the Millennium Falcon. They go into hyperspace, the stars, whoosh. But meanwhile, the Empire is all hyped up about their new Death Star. This one guy makes fun of Darth Vader, which is a bad idea because he can choke you out with his mind. Governor Tarkin is in command here, and Princess Leia won't tell him where the Rebel base is, so he decides to test the Death Star on her home planet of Alderaan. No, not Alderaan. Pew, 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 boom, explodes the whole planet. Our crew gets to Alderaan and there's nothing left, but they do see this small moon. That's no moon. Oh, it's the Death Star pulling them in. Luckily, Han Solo's a smuggler, so they hide in the compartments and then disguise themselves as stormtroopers. Obi-Wan goes to disable the tractor beam, but the guys find out Princess Leia is being held prisoner right here. So they bust in to save her. They flee into the trash compactor. Oh, the wall's closing in, but luckily R2-D2 hacks the system and shuts it down just in time. Obi-Wan disables the tractor beam, but he runs into Darth Vader, his old apprentice. We meet again at last. They have an epic lightsaber battle, except they're both kind of old now, so it's not that exciting. To help the gang escape, Obi-Wan causes a distraction by letting Vader strike him down. Oh, he just disappears into his robe. So our gang blasts their way out of there. Swivel chair battle against the TIE fighters. They fly to the rebel base, but they track their ship, so the Death Star is close behind. Luckily now, they have the stolen Death Star plans from R2-D2, and turns out there's a huge weakness. If you shoot a missile down the shaft to the core, it'll explode the whole thing. Han's not sticking around for the battle. He's taking his reward money and piecing out of there. Oh, that Han Solo only cares about himself. Then the Rebellion flies out on their X-Wings. It's like Red Leader checking in, or this is Red Five standing by. So it's a big space battle. Peppy's like, Fox, get this guy off my tail. Do a barrel roll. They're trying to bomb the shaft, but they all miss because they suck. And Darth Vader flies out. Shoot them all down. So at the end, Luke has the final torpedo. He's going to use the targeting computer, but he hears Obi-Wan's ghost voice. Use the force, Luke. So he turns off the computer, just going to eyeball it. Command's like, oh my god, we're all doomed. Vader's coming up behind him, but just before he fires, boom, he gets shot by Han Solo flying in to save the day. So Luke takes the shot, makes it in because he's the man, and boom, whole Death Star exploded. So the day is safe, they have a big silly metal ceremony, and that's how the first Star Wars comes to an end. Next, it's episode five, The Empire Strikes Back. The Rebellion's hanging out on Ice Planet. Luke gets captured by the abominable snowman from the Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer movie. Luckily, he's learned to use the Force. Boom, grabs his lightsaber, gets himself free. He's dying from the cold, and he hallucinates Ghost Obi-Wan. You must go to Swamp Planet and train with Yoda. Just then, Han Solo finds him, and they spend the night inside their dead horse thing, and Luke's A-OK. -okay. Han's joined the Rebellion. He and Leia kind of like each other, even though they have a very antagonistic relationship. You stuck-up, half-witted, scruffy-looking nerf herder. 
Who's scruffy looking? To prove that she doesn't like him, she kisses Luke, whoa. Meanwhile, the Empire has found the Rebellion on Ice Planet. They send down their walking robot thing, so they gotta use the cables to tie up their legs and knock them over. Darth Vader's mad at the failure, so he chokes out the one Admiral and promotes the guy next to him. They're chasing the Millennium Falcon, so Han flies through the asteroid field. C-3PO's like, whoa, the odds of survival are very low. Never tell me the odds. They hide out in an asteroid hole where he and Leia start smooching, but there's a giant worm monster in there, so they have to leave. Luke decides to trust his hallucination, and he goes to a swamp world he meets Yoda, the little old green man who speaks backwards. Yes, train you as a Jedi, I will. The Millennium Falcon got away, so Darth Vader hires famed bounty hunter Boba Fett. No disintegration. They fly off to Cloud World, where they meet Lando Calrissian, Han's old best friend, and he wears a space cape, so you know he's cool. But unfortunately, he leads them into a trap. I'm sorry, I had no choice. They're giving Han to Boba Fett so he can collect the bounty from Jabba the Hutt. Leia finally confesses her feelings. I love you. I know. Then, boom, they freeze him in carbonite, so yeah, Han's in a, in a block now. Luke has a vision of his friends in trouble, so he flies on over there and confronts Darth Vader. It's lightsaber battle time, pew, pew, pew. Unfortunately, Luke is a total noob and gets his hand cut off. Darth Vader's like, hey, you should join me on the dark side. It's super cool, I promise. But Luke's like, no way, you killed my father. And Darth Vader drops a truth bomb on him. I am the father. What? Mind explosion! Luke lets go and falls down. He lands on a weather vane thing. Lando helps them escape. They pick up Luke and fly on out of there. Luke gets a cool robot hand, and that's how Empire comes to an end. Episode 6, Return of the Jedi, starts down at Jabba the Hutt's palace. He's got Han Solo as his new wall decoration, but a new bounty hunter comes in. Turns out it's Leia in disguise. They're recaptured immediately, and they put Leia in the Slave Leia outfit, which caused a generation of boys to hit puberty. Luke comes in to save the day. He's a fully trained Jedi master now. He falls down the trap door and they're gonna make him walk the plank into the Sarlacc pit, but Luke's like, I don't think so, and pulls out his new green lightsaber. Yeah, kicking butt. Boba Fett flies in on his jetpack to show off what he can do, but he's a huge disappointment and is immediately knocked into the Sarlacc pit. Leia strangles Jabba and they bust on out of there. Luke goes back to see Yoda, but he's super old now, so he dies. Blah. Then Ghost Obi-Wan shows up with the truth bomb. By the way, Leia's your twin sister. It's like, what? Ew, I use tongue. Elsewhere, the Empire's building a new Death Star. The Rebels get the Death Star plans again, and turns out it has the exact same weakness as the first. Its weapons aren't operational yet, so they're gonna take it out, but it's protected by a shield from the nearby forest planet. So they go down to disable the shield, they have the speeder race through the woods, vroom. Long story short, they crash, and they're picked up by these little teddy bear people, the Ewoks. They're super cute, but apparently they want to feast on human flesh. Luckily, they think C-3PO is some sort of god, so they untie him and play it off like a hilarious misunderstanding. Luke tells Leia he's her brother, and she's like, oh god, I use tongue. He's like, hey sis, I'm gonna find our dad and try to bring him back to the light side. So he turns himself in, but Vader's like, uh, have you seen my outfit? I'm pretty committed to this dark side thing. He brings him to see the Emperor, who's like, by the way, your friends are walking into a trap. And when the Rebel fleet arrives, the weapons are very much operational. Admiral Obvious is like, it's a trap. Now the Emperor is a real creepy dude. He's all like, good, I feel your anger. He wants Luke to give in to his anger and join the dark side. And Luke does, he goes to strike him down, but Darth Vader blocks it. So father and son have an epic lightsaber duel. Pium, pium, pium. And this time Luke wins. But the Emperor wanted this. He's like, good, now strike him down and take his place by my side. But Luke's like, no, I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna stay light side. So the Emperor's like, fine, then it's lightning time. Lightning, pew. So Luke's being lightning to death and he's like, father, please help. And something in Darth Vader, it snaps. And he's like, no, I'm gonna save my son. Takes the Emperor and throws him down that pit. He explodes, so he's definitely dead. No way he could come back in a future movie. So Darth Vader is redeemed. Luke takes off his mask to see his father's face, and he's kind of an ugly dude. And it's like, what the hell, bro? I need that to live. Bleh. Down on the planet, the Ewoks join the fight, and even though they're hilariously outgunned, they somehow win and blow up the shield generator. So Lando Calrissian flies the Millennium Falcon down to the core and blows it up. It's exactly like the end of Star Fox 64. So new Death Star explodes, the galaxy's saved, they have a big Ewok party. Luke sees the forced ghosts of Yoda and Obi-Wan, now joined by his father, a young Anakin Skywalker. And that's how the original trilogy comes to an end. Now, wouldn't it be cool to see the backstory of Darth Vader and find out how the Empire rose to power? You're in luck, because it's time for the prequels. It starts with episode one, The Phantom Menace. And before the Empire, there was a galactic republic that was mostly at peace. And for trade disputes, they send in the Jedi to mediate. Liam Neeson is Jedi Master Qui-Gon Jinn, and Ewan McGregor's a young Obi-Wan Kenobi. The Trade Federation is working for this mysterious hooded figure who looks suspiciously like the future Emperor. He's like, kill the Jedi. So they gotta fight their way out of there, and the Trade Federation occupies the planet of Naboo. The Jedi meet up with the infamously lame Jar Jar Binks. Lisa called Jar Jar Binks. Long story short, they bar 
borrow his boat. They rescue Queen Amidala, but while escaping, their ship's damaged, so they have to land for repairs at Tatooine. That's Luke Skywalker's home planet. And they meet little slave boy, Anakin Skywalker. You're a slave? I'm a person, and my name is Anakin. He flirts with Natalie Portman, who's the Queen's handmaid in Padme, even though she's like twice his age. He's a real precocious kid. In fact, apparently, he built C-3PO. He offers to help them win the money they need by pod racing, which is pretty sweet and made a good N64 game. Long story short, he wins, and Liam Neeson's like, yo, you're real strong in the Force, kid. I'm gonna train you as a Jedi. Now, Queen Amidala talks to her representative, Senator Palpatine. The current Supreme Chancellor of the Senate won't help them get Naboo back, so they impeach his butt. And the new Supreme Chancellor elected is Palpatine. A surprise, to be sure, but a welcome one. But classic politician, he breaks his campaign promises he can't help either. So Amidala's going back to Naboo to liberate it herself. Long story short, Padme is the real Queen Amidala. The other one was a decoy. They recruit Jar Jar's people into the fight, and it's a big old CGI battle. But it's just a distraction for the main characters sneaking into the palace, where they're confronted by Darth Maul. He's the apprentice of the future emperor, and he has a sweet double-bladed lightsaber. One thing the prequels actually did real well is cool choreographed lightsaber battles. Boom. But at the end, Darth Maul kills Quiet. I got no! So Obi-Wan busts in there and does an epic flip thing, cuts Darth Maul in half, so there's no way he could come back in an animated spin-off series of the Clone Wars or in a cameo at the end of a future movie. Where's Anakin, by the way? He jacked a ship and flew up into the space battle. These ships also explode from one hit, and all the droids deactivate because they were connected to its Wi-Fi. So the day is saved, they have a big silly metal ceremony mirroring the end of the first Star Wars, and that's how Episode One comes to an end. In Episode Two, Attack of the Clones, there's a separatist movement now, a lot of planets trying to leave the Republic. Amidala is against this, so someone's trying to assess Fascinator. She's assigned her old Jedi friends for protection, and Anakin's grown up into Hayden Christensen. He hits on her again, and it's still weird, because it's like, bro, I knew you as a kid. The assassin strikes again with little centipede things, but the Jedi take care of that, and Obi-Wan leaps out the window to follow the droid. They end up in a flying car chase through the streets, and then go to a bar where they cut off this girl's hand. But before she can say who hired her, oh, someone takes her out. It's this Boba Fett-looking guy. Obi-Wan follows the clues to the rain planet Kamino, where the aliens there are master cloners. Turns out they've built a clone army for the Republic, Obi-Wan calls in like, yo, you guys order an army? And they're like, no, not us. The original clone host was famed bounty hunter Jango Fett, and he kept one to raise as a son, Boba. He and Obi-Wan have a fight on the dock, then sound bombs in space, and he follows them down to the Separatist planet. Meanwhile, Anakin is bodyguarding Padme on her home planet of Naboo. It's a lot nicer than his home planet Tatooine. I don't like sand. He's still hitting on her super creepily, but eventually they start rolling in the grass, so I guess they're in love. But he starts having nightmares about his mother. Remember, she's a slave too, and she was sold to some dirt farmer, oh, at Luke Skywalker's future home. Yeah, this dirt farmer bought her, but then fell in love and married her, but she was kidnapped and killed by sand people, so Anakin goes on a rampage, slaughters them all. And not just the men, but the women and the children, too. So Obi-Wan, spying on the Separatist High Command, they're led by Count Dooku, a former Jedi who's gone to the dark side. Obi-Wan gets caught. Anakin and Padme go to save Obi-Wan. They have a big fight in the droid building factory. By the way, C-3PO and R2-D2 are in the prequels. They get up to lots of shenanigans. Anyway, they're all captured in a Coliseum thing, they have to fight these big alien bug monsters. But Jedi Sam Jackson shows up. Party's over, mother <laughs> Yeah, the Jedi are here to save the day. They have a big ol' fight in the pit. Jango Fett tries to take down Mace Windu, pew pew, but all gets his head cut off. Poor young Boba's like, Father, I will avenge you! The Jedi are surrounded and way outnumbered. There's no way they can win, but what's this busting in? It's Yoda with the clone army! Good thing someone ordered those, right? So it's another giant CGI battle. Jedi go to fight Count Dooku, but Force Lightning, whoa! And he takes out Obi-Wan, he's way too strong. And it can goes for a one-on-one, -on -one, but first they stop for a Jedi glow stick rave party. Then Dooku cuts his arm off and boom, he's beating both Jedi. But Yoda comes in. Wait, are we gonna see Yoda lightsaber battle? Yes! Oh, he's flipping around. What a little badass. But in the end, Dooku escapes and the galaxy is now at war. They call it the Clone Wars because all the troops are clones. Now it's episode three, Revenge of the Sith. The Clone Wars have been raging for a few years. This is a great animated series. Check it out. Anakin and Obi-Wan come to rescue Chancellor Palpatine and rematch Count Dooku. Lightsaber battle, pew, pew, pew. But Anakin's a lot stronger now, and this time he wins. He's gonna take him prisoner, but Palpatine's like, kill him. Do it. So Anakin's like, Hula, okay, cuts his head off. Anakin reunites with Padme. They had a secret wedding at the end of the last movie because Jedi are forbidden from being in relationships. They're supposed to be like monks, you know? Padme's got some big news. She's like, hey, I'm Preggers. Say what? On top of that, Anakin starts having nightmares that Padme will die in childbirth. Now Anakin and Palpatine had tickets to Cirque du Soleil. Palpatine's like, hey, have you ever heard the tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise? He was a Dark Lord of the Sith that had the power to save people from death. Anakin's like, wow, that'd be great, but how do you know this? And it's like, oh, 
because I'm a Dark Lord of the Sith. Anakin's like, what? But he's like, don't worry, the dark side's super cool, trust me. So Anakin tells Sam Jackson, who shows up with some Jedi, it's like, you're under arrest, the Senate will decide your fate. I am the Senate. And oh, he does a crazy spin move, takes all these guys out. He's jumping around and flipping quite a lot for an old guy. In the end, Mace Windu's gonna win, but he's like, lightning time, oh! But Mace Windu blocks it, reflects it back on him, and oh, that's why he's getting all ugly. Mace Windu's gonna kill him, but Anakin's like, no, I need him to teach me how to save Padme. Then Palpatine force lightning out the window. So surprising no one, Chancellor Palpatine's now obviously the future emperor. And he's like, good, you shall be my new apprentice, Darth Vader. Anakin's like, yeah, whatever, man, just teach me how to save Padme. And he's like, okay, I will, but first, you gotta go to the Jedi Temple and kill all the remaining Jedi, including the younglings. So Anakin's alignment has gone from zero to negative 100 real quick. Lots of Jedi are spread across the galaxy fighting in the Clone Wars, but Palpatine's got a plan for this. Execute order 66. Yeah, that's the code for the clone troopers to turn on all the Jedi. So Palpatine was hilariously the leader of both sides of the Galactic Civil War. Now it's time to consolidate though. He sends Darth Vader to the Separatist leaders to kill them all. He talks to the Senate like, hey guys, Republics are super lame. Let's make this baby an empire. Everyone's like, yeah, sure. I mean, why not? So this is how liberty dies, with thunderous applause. Obi-Wan was busy fighting General Grievous. He's got four arms doing a windmill thing, but they ended up having a chicken unicycle race and long story short, shoots him in the heart. Obi-Wan sees Anakin's gone to the dark side, so he grabs Padme and they rush over to Volcano Planet. She's like, Anakin, have you gone to the dark side? And he's like, yeah, baby, dark side's super cool, trust me. Obi-Wan pops out, so Anakin thinks Padme betrayed him and chokes her out a bit. Then it's time for the Anakin-Obi-Wan lightsaber battle. Yeah, pew, pew, pew. It's really pretty sweet choreography, except for some parts that are weird. Meanwhile, Yoda goes to fight the Emperor and they have a lightsaber battle in the Senate chamber. They start throwing chairs at each other and then some lightning and blocking, but boom, explosion, and Yoda falls down into this guy's car. It's like, take me back to Swamp Planet. It, I'm going into exile for a few 30 years. The Anakin Obi-Wan fight has gotten really out of hand, so Obi-Wan jumps onto dry land. It's over, Anakin! I have the high ground! But Anakin's like, you underestimate my power, and tries to jump over him, so Obi-Wan cuts his legs off. Oh! Obi-Wan makes a tearful speech. You are my brother, Anakin. You are supposed to bring balance to the Force, not leave it in darkness. Obi-Wan leaves him there to burn out, but the Emperor finds him and brings him in for some serious surgery, and now Anakin has fully become Darth Vader. Vader's like, wow, things really got out of hand back there, but luckily it's all good now, and uh, you can help me save Padme. The Emperor's like, oof, this is awkward, but when you choked her out, you killed her. No! But it was a lie. Padme's alive, and she's given birth right now to twins, Luke and Leia. But the sadness of Anakin going to the dark side breaks her heart, and she dies. The prophecy came true because he tried to avoid it. Ooh. They send Leia to live on the beautiful planet of Alderaan and be raised as a princess. And Luke they give to his step-uncle on crappy desert planet to be a dirt farmer. And that's how the prequels come to an end. Now it's time for the sequel trilogy. First, I'll quickly mention Rogue One, which tells the story right before the original Star Wars of how the Rebellion stole the Death Star plans. People really love this movie, but it was fine. There's also Solo, which tells the origin story of Han Solo. People hated this movie, but it was fine. Now it's Episode 7, The Force Awakens. After the Empire fell in the original trilogy, part of it stayed together and rebranded as the First Order. So Poe Dameron's an ace pilot in the New Resistance. He gets some important information and he, surprise, hides it in a droid. The villain in this one is Kylo Ren, and he wears a sweet mask just like Vader did. He's got a crazy lightsaber with handles. That's actually really smart. He captures Poe and tells the stormtroopers to execute the civilians, but one stormtrooper refuses to do it. He's having a crisis of conscience, and his name is Finn. But our main character is Rey. She's a trash scavenger down on Sand Planet, not Tatooine from the originals, a new one called Jakku. She's got a hard life trading junk for rations of Insta bread and count down the days since her family abandoned her on this rock. One day, she runs into Poe's droid, it's BB-8. He's super cute, beeps and boops, just like R2-D2 did, and they become insta-best friends. Meanwhile, Finn helps Poe escape. They steal a ship, but crash land on Jakku, and oh no, looks like Poe died. BB-8 recognizes Poe's jacket, so Rey knocks Finn out, but he explains, no, I'm a friend of Poe's, I helped him escape. Just then, the bad guys show up, so our crew goes to steal a ship. It's the Millennium Falcon! Rey's never flown a ship before, but she just kind of wings it and does a great job, so they bust on out of there. This random officer gives the Bad news to Kylo Ren. Back in Vader's day, you'd be choked out, but I guess HR put a stop to that. Kylo just breaks things with his lightsaber. So Finn and Rey are on the Millennial Falcon. They're picked up by another ship, though, and it is Han Solo and Chewbacca. Oh! It's like legendary rebel Han Solo. We need your help to take this droid with important information back to the Resistance. He's like, huh, this, this all sounds kind of familiar. What's BB-8 got anyway? Well, it's a partial map to Luke Skywalker. Yeah, where is Luke? What happened to him? Well, he was trying to train a new Jedi Order, but one of the students went to the 
dark side and killed everyone, so Luke went into exile. Han's gonna help him, but first they stop at a bar where they meet Maz Kanata. Rey tries to find the bathroom, but instead she finds an old lightsaber. When she touches it, boom, the force is awakened within her. Turns out that is Luke Skywalker's old lightsaber, the blue one that he dropped back on Cloud World. Why does Maz have it? I don't know, but she's like, Rey, it's yours now. Just then the bad guys attack and Rey ends up in the forest, so Finn gets to use the lightsaber. He's had no training though and gets his butt kicked. Luckily, resistance fighters come to save the day, led by ace pilot Poe Dameron. Yeah, he survived. That's one hell of a pilot! Kylo Ren kidnaps Rey and the First Order pieces out of there. Then Han Solo's reunited with Princess Leia, his one true love. C-3PO's there too, by the way. Han and Leia have been estranged for years because the kid Luke was training that went bad was their son, Ben Solo, none other than Kylo Ren. So Kylo's got this hero worship thing for Darth Vader, his maternal grandfather, and his current mentor is Supreme Leader Snoke, who is not a giant, that's just a hologram. Kylo's talking to Rey, and he takes off his mask, but, oh, he's not scarred or anything. He's like, what? No, I don't need that to live. It just makes me look cool. The First Order's built a bigger, badder Death Star called Star Killer Base. The old Death Star could destroy a whole planet. Puh, this one can destroy five planets. And so in one fell swoop, they've taken out the New Republic. So now the Resistance needs to destroy Star Killer Base. Han's like, let me guess, there's one spot we could hit that would blow up the entire thing? Finn's like, oh yeah, actually there is right there. But they need to get down onto the surface to disable the shields. Finn doesn't know how though. He wasn't an engineer. Basically, he was a janitor. He's like, whatever, we'll just use the force. That's not how the force works. Long story short, they get the shields down and the resistance can fly in to bomb it. But the bad guys finally decided to cover their one weakness with super thick steel. So the gang finds Rey and goes to blow him a hole. But then they find Kylo Ren. Han's like, Kylo, I am your father. But Kylo's like, yeah, dad, I know. It's not a mystery this time. Han's like, son, I love you. Come on back to the light side. And Kylo's like, mm, maybe. Just kidding. Oh, he stabs Han Solo. Kylo fights Rey and Finn, knocks Rey out immediately. So Finn gets a second chance with his lightsaber, but he still sucks, gets totally wrecked. Now Kylo wants that lightsaber for himself because remember before it was Luke's, it was Anakin's Darth Vader. But the lightsaber passes him and chooses Rey. Doom, doom, lightsaber battle. But Rey's never been trained either and she's losing, but then she channels the force and turns it around, boom, gives Kylo a scar to go with that mask. They get out of there just in time for Poe to fly in and blow up the new, new Death Star. BB-8 goes to see R2-D2, who's been in sleep mode. He's got the other half of the map to Luke Skywalker, and at the top of the mountain she finds him, the last Jedi. Hey, I think you dropped this about 30 years ago, and that's how Force Awakens comes to an end. Now it's episode eight, The Last Jedi. After a few years of waiting, we finally see Luke's reaction he just throws it over his shoulder. What? Luke, we need your help to save the galaxy from the evil empire. He's like, yo kid, I already saved the galaxy once. I'm just gonna chill here as a hermit drinking my blue alien milk. Elsewhere, the First Order found a rebel base, so they're evacuating. Ace pilot Poe Dameron flies in and prank calls General Hux. This buys the resistance time to escape, but the First Order tracks them through light speed. That's not supposed to be possible. Kylo Ren flies in with his sweet new scar, ready to kill his mom, but he doesn't hate his mom as much as his dad. He can't go through with it. Unfortunately, his friends can, and ho, oh, Princess Leia sucked into space. It's super sad, RIP Carrie Fisher, but oh, wait, what's this, she's alive? Yeah, I guess she uses her latent force powers to survive in space and Mary Poppins back to the ship. The rest of the movie is a hilariously slow chase scene as the resistance is just out of range of the First Order and they're not gonna run out of gas for like two days. Finn's all healed from his injuries and wants to leave to find Rey, he's got kind of a crush on her. Instead, he meets Rose Tico, just a maintenance worker, but between them, they figure out how to disable the light speed track on the First Order ship. They need a master code breaker to get him in the system though, and Maz Kanata knows a great one on Casino Planet. They find the high class code breaker, but they parked illegally, so they're sent to Casino Jail, where they meet a drunken bum of a code breaker, but he seems to know what he's doing, so they figure he'll do. They steal a bunch of horse racing aliens and cause quite a commotion as they bust on out of there. Finn and Rose sneak onto the First Order ship, code breaker gets him in, and they're getting ready to shut it down, then the resistance will light speed out of there. But the drunken bum code breaker obviously turned them into the First Order, so this whole plan was pointless. Now Rey's doing a bad job of training herself, so Luke finally agrees to give her some pointers. But turns out the Force is ridiculously strong with her. I've seen this raw strength only once before. It was Kylo Ren, and he ended up going to the dark side and burning Luke's house down, so he doesn't want a repeat of that. Speaking of Kylo, he and Rey have some sort of psychic Force connection. They can see each other sometimes, and sometimes he's shirtless. Oh, hey, didn't see you there. I was just getting my ab workout in, no biggie. Anyway, he tells his side of the story that he woke up one night and Luke was about to kill him, so he just defended himself and feeling betrayed by his master, that's why he went to the dark side. Let the past die. Kill it if you have to. 
She feels bad for him, so these two psychically hold hands and, oh yeah, they're definitely gonna bang. She confronts Luke and gets the real full story. He had a vision that Kylo was going to go to the dark side, so he thought about preemptively killing him, but then couldn't go through with it. But then Kylo woke up and it was awkward, and then that's how it goes. Ray's like, okay, boomer, and she flies off to go hang with Kylo, bring him back to the light side. Luke gets wasted on his blue milk and goes to burn down the Jedi Temple, but Force Ghost Yoda shows up. He knocks some sense into Luke. It's like, hey man, you think you're the only one with an apprentice who went to the dark side? It's happened to literally everyone. Now Kylo Ren brings Rey to meet Supreme Leader Snoke, who dressed up for the occasion in his best pajamas. We don't get any of his backstory. He's just super ugly and super strong with the Force. He wants Kylo to kill Rey and complete his journey to the dark side. It looks like Kylo's gonna do it. No redemption arc for him. But wait, what's this? He's sneakily turning a lightsaber and boom, turns it on and kills Snoke. Kylo kills Snoke, epic twist. Snoke's bodyguards are apparently paid to avenge his death, so Kylo and Rey team up to take them all out. Super sweet fight, these two make a great team and they win. She's like, thanks Kylo, I knew you'd come back to the light side, now tell them to stop firing on the resistance. But he's like, whoa, slow your roll, girl. Uh, I didn't go to the light side. I just didn't like Snoke, but I do like you. You should join me on the dark side. It's super cool, I promise. Then Kylo drops the truth bomb about her parents. Turns out they were... They were nobody. Just a couple of junkies who abandoned her on Jakku. She's not a Skywalker, not a Snoke, not a Palpatine. This makes Rey super sad, but she's still going light side and tries to grab the lightsaber. These two fighting over it and boom, rip it in half. Right about then, things look real bad for the resistance. So to buy the rest of them time to escape, purple haired Admiral turns her ship around and what's this? Light speed, baby. Boom, right into the First Order fleet, tears them apart. This causes significant distraction for Finn and Rose to escape. Finn has a showdown with his arch enemy, his old commanding officer, Captain Phasma. She was a real cool underused character from Force Awakens. I'm excited to see more of her, but oh, Finn knocks her into the fire. I guess she's dead. So the remains of her resistance makes it to an old base. It's not on a snow planet. That's a salt planet. The red dust underneath makes a super cool visual for their last stand. Ray flies in on the Millennium Falcon. I guess Chewie picked her up along with these cute animals called Porgs. First Order's got a big cannon and Finn's gonna sacrifice himself to take it out Independence Day style. But Rose comes and stops him. She's like, I'm not gonna let you sacrifice yourself. Let's make out. So just then, when the resistance has no hope left, Luke Skywalker walks in. Did someone say a new hope? Yeah, he's come to save the day. Stares down the whole First Order single-handedly. Kylo's like, yo, fire every gun we have on this guy. Poof, poof, boom. It's like, you think we got him? But they actually didn't. What? Luke Skywalker, what a boss. So he and Kylo have their final lightsaber duel. And Luke still got some slick moves for an old man. In the end, he pulls an Obi-Wan Kenobi and Kylo goes to cut him, but nothing happened. Luke is not really there. Yeah, he's a force projection. He's just meditating super hard back on Exile Planet. He's like, kid, you just got punked, and boom, fades out, and then in real life, that I guess the strain, he dies from that too. But he bought enough time for the resistance to escape. Ray's out there lifting the rocks for him. Uh, yeah, I guess she's mastered her force powers now. And they fly off on the Millennium Falcon. The resistance may be down to just 12 total people, but as long as the downtrodden trodden and oppressed of the galaxy have opened their hearts, the resistance will never die. And that's how The Last Jedi comes to an end. Now you're ready for the epic finale of the Trilogy of Trilogies, Episode 9, Rise of Skywalker. If you like this recap, hit that subscribe button. I'm bringing you the best recaps of TV and movies, so don't miss out.